I'm Mike Robinson, and in this episode, join me as we go harvesting wild fallow deer in a remote part of the Cotswolds. You'll learn about wild deer management, from the equipment used to the techniques necessary to preserve this amazing wild resource. We're going to go to a little section of valleys where there are a lot of fallow deer, and um, the landowners, it's three or four small landowners, and they're all very keen to see some deer taken out. So uh, we're just going to go and creep around some woods with the wind in our favour, and hopefully we can get a couple of deer that we can put into the larder. So basic gear, we go light because we've got to carry everything around, we're going to walk several miles. Let's have a look, starting off we've got my Savage PPR rifle. This is a prototype which is going into production, professional deer management rifle, lightweight magazine, I've got 20 rounds of uh, 120 grain CX outfitter, one of the ammo. Uh, this is 6.5 Creedmoor. I've got big sound suppressor, saw, knife, uh, thermal viewer, I'm running Vortex Razor lightweight scope, one absolutely brilliant piece of equipment. And then in the car I've got my, again, Vortex range finding binoculars. And do you know that's pretty much it, a pair of sticks. Have my wits about me, make sure the wind's in my face. You've got to know your grounds. So I've got certain areas we'll nose into where the deer tend to hold up just before dawn, and hopefully, before it gets too light, we'll put one or two on the ground and then we'll keep walking. <laughs> A good moderator or suppressor like this really makes a difference in Britain because, you know, I can kill a deer in the wood or wood and then go another 200 yards and the other deer will still be there because they won't have been frightened off. So it's five rounds in the magazine, half a dozen spares in my binocular caddy. Never run out of ammunition. So we use a two-pronged approach to finding deer. <clears throat> Bear in mind, we're not hunting deer in Britain. Uh, to try and find a big buck or anything like that. It's not a sporting thing, this is a management thing. Um, so what I've got is I've got my amazing Vortex Razor range finding binoculars, and these will show me exactly how far away something is, which is super useful. So if I come here and at the end of that field there, 300, there's 10 deer, I, know, I can tell exactly that they're 300 yards away, I know exactly where to shoot and it tells me what the deer is. That's really important. Is it a one-year-old male? Is it a three-year-old female? Then my thermal viewer here will actually find that deer in the first place in low light in thick woodland. So if I every few seconds have a little glance, it'll tell me that there's a muntjac in that wood over there. And that allows me to up my cull, and that's what we're here for. We're here to harvest deer. Millie's already on the job. <laughs> that dog is a professional. I'm wearing gloves because these shine like pasty white hands. Uh, rifle. Safely load it. Check everything. Check the parallax is set on a hundred, and I want this to be on about eight power. We're ready to roll. was a very unusual sight. It was a fallow doe, but unfortunately she was standing with too much undergrowth in front of it for me to shoot. But she had twins. Now, fallow deer are only supposed to have one youngster. But we're seeing more and more of these deer have twins, and that is really bad news from a deer management point.
So there's a lovely big ginger dog fox sat on that bank looking at his territory. And there's no pheasant shooting around here. No one's really got chickens. So, you know, I don't hold with this idea that people have in Britain that, you know, you just see a fox shoot it. I think they're amazing animals. And um, if they need to be shot, like if they're killing chickens or livestock or wholesale killing pheasants, I understand it. But, you know, he's having a good time and he's doing what he's designed to do. So we'll just let him enjoy his life. I know that deer often love this bank above me, so I've approached today below this little rise you can see just in front, and that allows me to get in close without the deer clocking me, so that hopefully I can surprise them and get a shot. There's six fallow deer. But of course they're standing right behind some trees, so we've just got to wait. Are they in range? Great. But they go, they're moving. I wanted to come low, so we had this bank. And what I shot was a large fallow doe, which is exactly right. She was about 150 yards, looking right at us. And I shot her near, yeah, so you heard the sort of, and then she just tumbled down the slope. And I can see her lying there. And the others ran off. But that's okay, because <laughs> it's not the easiest place to get a deer out of. So, um, but that was exactly what we wanted. The landowner will be super happy because sometimes he has a hundred in these paddocks and that drives him mad. Um, and that's exactly what we want to harvest. She's cleanly shot, she felt no pain, and um, yeah, now it's time for the dogs to do what the dogs do and go and find the deer. Minnie, get on, find it. When they hit the scent, you'll see them both just go straight for it. Not far now. And she's found it. <laughs> Good girl. First thing we now have to do is unload the rifle, make sure the bolt's open, safety, 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 lean it somewhere secure, like that. So the way dogs find deer is really interesting because I didn't send the dogs in from where I shot it, so they were looking up the hill, they saw the deer shot, they knew there was a deer, but I brought them into the wood and then sent them up. The deer's dropped behind these brambles, so it was invisible. So the dogs, if they see a white belly, will go straight to it. So they had to use their nose. There's no wind at all. So they had to keep quartering up the slope. And then Sorrel here picked up the scent and came straight to it. And then I've trained them to basically stand on the deer so they will stay there until I arrive and tell me where it is. This is a big doe. This was like an alpha doe, exactly what we want to harvest because um, she's at least four years old so fully mature and um, big strong animal beautiful venison this is about the primest meat on the planet the deer's got no stress in it whatsoever the heart will be floppy it's been neatly shot um, it never even saw the flash of the rifle I mean for me as a meat eater wild meat is the best meat and why is wild meat the best meat it's because I know that it hasn't suffered it's been through no human related stress and uh, it's eaten exactly what it wants. It's browsed and foraged, lived a wild natural life. So um, to be able to take that cull, that harvest and then, uh, and then put it in the restaurants and sell it through deer box, yeah, it's something I'm very proud of. And um, I don't get pleasure in killing the deer. I get pleasure in doing the job well. And I think that's an important thing. We don't hunt for trophies. We don't hunt for antlers. We hunt for the meat and to manage the land. Cut a green stick. So this 
is going to go between our hind legs and go here. And then the deer will hang down at a 45 degree angle, meaning when I'm growlicking, it's not sliding around, it's not unsafe, and it adds out of the mud and it's clean. Let's just inspect the deer. Look inside. Spotless, just looks like in a butcher's shop. And what I also did was I inspected the guts to make sure that all the lymph chain was healthy, um, there were no diseases. So I certify that this deer is in immaculate condition and is perfect to go in the public food chain. Now we just have to get it out. It's all part of what you have to do. If you don't want to get them out, don't pull the trigger. Time to make like a husky. So we're here at our deer larder, which is where we uh, which is where the deer come to before they go down the deer box. So it's just like a big holding fridge. And um, some of our guys on this large area of land have been out and shot some this morning. So they're dropping off, and now we're gonna drop off as well. I get the, uh, I watch it on season and uh, oh, yeah. chasse pêche. Farm in the wild? Yes. Yeah, nice. That's, yeah, that's no, the pêche, one, yeah. fishing the wild. Yeah. Yeah, because we I do the fishing shows with him. Oh, so yeah, <laughs> we um, yeah we just been down in the some of the small bits of land down the valley. Oh yeah, there's a whole. I just shot one in the place. hardest possible place in the hole and the so entire you sweat, place. You sweaty hair going on. <laughs> it's like, and it's you like, guys, two monk jack? Just two monk jack, yeah. yeah. Oh mate, it's like that. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Big yeah. doe though. Good, good, pleased. So one of the things we absolutely have to do is put a tag on it. It's a legal tag, uh, declares we use lead-free ammunition. It says where it was shot, who by, my number, a tag number, and that then goes into our system, which means we can tell a customer exactly where their deer came from. And it, it, from a hygiene point of view, it means we can track an individual deer. It's all part of the data collection that we do. Join me on the next episode where I go hunting Chinese water deer on a farm that is overrun with these invasive little critters. Then it's off to Deer Box HQ to skin and prep and finally back to mine for a delicious cook-up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for updates on when all my new programs are dropping.